More than two weeks have passed since Iran vowed to avenge the assassination of Hamas's political head Ismail Haniyeh, but a large-scale military response from Tehran is yet to materialize. Remember, Haniyeh was killed in Tehran shortly after attending the Iranian president's oath-taking ceremony. Iran has squarely blamed Israel for the killing and heightening of tensions in the entire region. As a key supporter of Hamas and Hezbollah, Iran's threat of retaliation has been closely monitored by global observers given the potential for extensive conflict. With a robust network of proxies, including Hezbollah, Iran could theoretically strike at Israel from multiple directions, ranging from northern Israel all the way up to the Red Sea. We bring you an extensive report. The Middle East is on tenterhooks. In the end of July, Iran vowed revenge after the assassination of Hamas's political head and a senior Hezbollah commander. But more than two weeks on, there is still no large-scale response, leaving the world wondering what's going on. Iran has promised to avenge the death of Ismail Haney, a senior Hamas leader who was killed in Tehran on the 31st of July after he attended the inauguration of Iran's president, Masood Pazeshki. While Israel has not taken responsibility for the killing, Iran, which backs Hamas, has blamed Israel for the assassination. A day before Hanei was murdered, Fuad Shukra, a senior commander in Hezbollah, which is also supported by Iran, was killed in an Israeli airstrike in Lebanon's Beirut. The Israeli government said the strike was in retaliation for a rocket fired from Lebanon that struck a soccer field in the Israeli-controlled Golan Heights, killing at least 12 people, mostly teenagers and children. Hezbollah has denied carrying out that attack. But Hanei's killing was seen as a greater blow to Tehran because it took place on Iranian soil. Iran's Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei issued an order for Iran to strike Israel directly. Failing to follow through on that threat would leave Iran vulnerable. April, for the very first time, Iran attacked Israel from its own soil, firing around 300 missiles and drones. This was in response to an alleged Israeli strike on an Iranian embassy complex. Almost all the projectiles were shot down by Israel's air defenses, assisted by the US and other allies. It was the first direct attack by Iran after years of a shadow war between both nations. In the run-up to an imminent Iranian attack, Hamas targeted the Israeli city of Tel Aviv with two M90 rockets. Hezbollah also fired a volley of Katyusha rockets towards Israel. Leaders of US, Britain, France, Germany and Italy called on Iran to stand down its threat of military action and said they supported Israel's defense against Iranian aggression. The US has stepped up its military readiness. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered additional combat aircraft, warships and a guided missile submarine to the Middle East. This is to bolster Israel's capacity to thwart any potential attack and to reinforce the message that it will support the country militarily. At the same time, the Biden administration is hoping to jumpstart ceasefire talks for Gaza. Israel has said it will send negotiators, but Hamas has not said if it will participate in the talks. While Iran believes it is necessary to punish Israel, it is also not interested in escalating regional tensions. Iran's new president, who is seen as a reformist, may try to balance a perceived need to project strength with his government's broader interest in elevating the effects of Western sanctions. A symbolic military response may be risky from Tehran's perspective and it may not deter Israel from conducting further attacks. But a substantive response could provoke a bigger Israeli response. And then Tehran may not be able to control the cycle of escalation that could follow. With no good options, which way will Iran go? But much depends on what the conclusion is of the peace talks that have been taking place. Remember, they're being mediated by the West and, of course, Qatar and Egypt. Will, of course, they be able to sort of pacify Iran? Will they be able to come up with a solution for peace between uh, the, uh, the, the Middle East as far as Iran is concerned? Hezbollah, Hamas, remember, Hamas has refused to join these peace talks. And, of course, will Israel be equally contended with what 
whatever has been deduced from these peace talks remains extremely crucial. And with that, let's now shift focus from one war to another, and that is the one in Ukraine. A week after Ukraine's unexpected cross-border incursion into Russia, Moscow continues to grapple with the situation as Russia struggles to regain control. The surprise operation has not only posed a significant tactical challenge, but has also become a major embarrassment for the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, who has publicly vowed to drive the Ukrainian forces out of Russian territory. The situation has also reverberated on the international stage with US President Joe Biden commenting on the development. In a statement, Joe Biden noted that Ukraine had created a real dilemma for the Russian president. Remember, this is a major breakthrough for Ukraine ever since the war began because they've already crossed almost 1,000 kilometers into the Russian territory. And that has indeed kept the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, on tenterhooks. Will he be able to push Ukraine back? That's something we'll have to wait and watch.